it's really just about doing what you love and finding a passion for that because that's what's going to keep you motivated and inspired every single day. Welcome to the Productivity is Podcast. It's me, Mike Vardy, and this week on the program, I'm welcoming Christina Nadenova to the program. Now, this is by far the youngest guest I've ever had on the show. It's the youngest, uh, Christina's the youngest guest I've ever interviewed for any of the podcasts I've hosted, and it was a real, real joy to do so. She is fantastic there's not i really want to get into this with her because i mean first off she's published a novel and that is close to my heart because back when i was around her age i was going to young authors conferences and i was really into writing so it was really cool to be able to talk to somebody else who's so passionate about this but so much more let's get into my conversation right now with christina nadanova here on the productivity is podcast enjoy I'd like to welcome Christina Nadanova to the Productivity is Podcast. Christina, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So I think you have the distinction of being the youngest ever guest on the podcast. That's awesome. <laughs> is That's this, awesome. This is probably not new to you, though, I would imagine. If you've been on other podcasts, it's probably like you are one of the youngest uh, you know, people out there that's kind of talking about this stuff, I would imagine. Even like you're writing for Thrive Global. I mean, this is something that... Um, I mean, I've got a 15-year-old daughter, and she doesn't talk about this stuff. My son t- is 10, and he's home right now playing video games because he's not feeling 100%. And here you are at 12 kind of um, you know, doing this kind of stuff. What what led you to start writing and, and, and doing the stuff that you're doing online? Of course, I'm going to link to all this stuff that you do in the show notes, but mm-hmm. I just want to get that story from you. Mm-hmm. So I actually was really invested in reading and writing from an incredibly young age, I, spe- I, I believe I picked up my first chapter book when I was around five years old. And since then, I was just really captivated by literature. So afterwards, I realized that I also wanted to expand my talents into writing and my interest and passion for this into writing. It started off with some just short stories and poems for friends and family. But then I read a couple of books and realized this is something I want to do. I want to write a book, share my passion with the world and reach readers with something that I'm very deeply interested in. And the book that that I'm looking at right now on Amazon, because yes, you have an Amazon author profile, is the Black Sisterhood Files, right? Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. What's it about? Just because, I mean, I know that um, it's it's fiction, right? So it's a fiction mm-hmm. book. But what yeah. what was the, what, what's it about? It's a murder mystery thriller, which is about six girls and their adventure to unearth the identity of a mysterious killer who has massacred their hometown. It also includes some elements of coming of age because the main character recently moved to this new town of Parkersburg, West Virginia, and she's met with so many strange occurrences and new people and just all all sorts of peculiar events. Yeah. So how did you set aside the time to work on something like this? Obviously, you know, you're going to school or taking studies and you've also probably mm-hmm. got friends and stuff that you want to hang out with. So how, yeah. do, you, yeah. how do you navigate all of the, the, the writing that you're doing and, and, and working on a novel with just being a kid? So I guess balancing out writing school and my social life was fairly difficult at first because I wasn't used to doing that. I normally would just have to balance out school and social life, which wasn't that hard of an endeavor. However, I did always have to um, find at least a couple hours in my day to write because as you can imagine, it's, it's really onerous feat to write a novel because when you when you write a book, you have to go back and edit almost every single chapter and you become just super Mm -hmm. uh you know you become just super picky about every single sentence you write whether or not this will appeal to readers or not whether or not it's extra or needs more detail so i i would say that at first i think i really mismanaged my time because i was just a fledgling in the arena i think i would work for too much of my novel and lose focus on things such as school and my social life however then as i um became you know more expertise in that particular field. I guess I learned how to balance out all of those three things in a manner that was effective. Now, there's not many uh, kids your age that have written a novel or, you know, or I've written for like a site like Thrive Global or anything like that. And Mm -hmm. I want to go down a little bit of a different path here because I mean, there's peer pressure in school, right? Like I remember going to school, you know, I've got kids. How do you navigate the pressure like the peer pressure that could come across with things like this I went when I went to school I'll give you an example I wrote 
a short story and was invited to the Young Authors mm-hmm. Conference when I went to school. And I was probably about your, maybe a little bit older than you when I did this. Mm-hmm. And it was great because I got to go bring my, and the, the novel was called, it was like a novella and it was called Tiny Adventures at the Local Malt Shop. And it was inspired by uh, the work of like Douglas Adams, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide mm-hmm. to the Galaxy yeah. kind of stuff. And I remember it was an amazing experience. I got to read this little book and I still have a copy of it. Actually, I still have like the copy that uh, was illustrated. My mom would type it, typed it out. This is back, of course, when there weren't computers that you necessarily used as much. So she had an electric typewriter. But the thing that that I do also remember is um, the kids that didn't understand that this was something that I was doing. It was just weird or different. How do you navigate that? Because I imagine you come across this a little bit as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I can totally relate to that because a lot of people, they just treat me differently after finding out that I'm interested in reading and writing because, you know, in my school, in my age, when you're like 12, 13, 14 years old, you're considered a nerd, not not in a good way yep. if you're invested in those <laughs> kinds of things. And I'm really lucky to have, I'm grateful and lucky to have friends who support me through all, through all of it. However, there are obviously many occurrences where people are extremely judgmental about the fact that I'm truly very passionate about reading, writing, and literature. So I guess I overcome that by just realizing that in about five to 10 years, these people won't be playing a significant role in my life and their criticism shouldn't have an effect on my work and what I put out into the world. That's really, that's really mature and, 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 and uh, insightful of you. Cause it's, it's Thank hard, to, it's hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think it's hard to, it's hard to do that as an adult, let alone as a, <laughs> as a kid, you know, there's that imposter syndrome, right? Which I'm yeah. sure you've heard oh, about yeah. things yeah, like for that. Sure. Yeah. So you've written on thrive. This, this actually le- like leans in nicely to the idea of mindfulness and you've written about mm-hmm. this before. So clearly you've given some thought to this and you you practice mindfulness again not something that is widely um, thought of when you're thinking of kids and again let alone busy adults so um, Mm -hmm. you've written a post called five easy ways to implement mindfulness into your daily life and you've talked about transforming your life through the power of the human mind Mm -hmm. what what was the thing that you think is the simplest maybe not the easiest but the simplest for someone who's trying to implement mindfulness into their into their routine what's one of the simplest things that they can do that's a great question i would definitely say meditation because for example for myself i try to meditate every single day both in the morning and in the night and not only does it help improve my sleep schedule and my overall mood during the day it also really helps boost energy and motivation while i'm working on a particular project such as writing my next book or marketing my novel or just connecting with readers or whatever whatever it may be so i would say i have some really great app recommendations sure. for meditating one of them is actually i can just check it right now if that's okay yeah yeah yeah. it's literally it's literally just called meditate you can it's found in the app store i think and it's on android too it's just called meditate and they have a bunch of different routines and exercises both breathing exercise and meditation exercises that work for almost everybody and i've been using it for at least a couple months now and it has really helped me with mindfulness and exercising that you know and cultivating mindfulness yeah um, what about social media? You're marketing your book. You're using social media. Again, I'm looking at, at, at the Thrive Global profile that you have there, which I'll link to in the show notes. And I mean, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter. Mm-hmm. The, social media can be um, a great place to share things, but it can also be a huge distraction and maybe even a bit of yeah. a derailer, right? Like it can, Definitely. it can actually, you know, I mean, especially in the world that we're living in right now. Um, it can, I mean, it can get you down, right? So how do yeah, you, how do you, sure. do you, are you the type of person where you go in, you do what you need to do and you get out of there or how do you, how do you navigate social media? So absolutely not. I'm not that kind of person. I get distracted really, really easily by social media. And I wish I was that kind of person. I wish I could just go in, get what I need to get done, maybe upload a post, respond to some DMs, and then just be, you know, just be on my way doing more productive things. However, I'm definitely the one to get distracted by post on my explore page or post on my feed and that's how the instagram algorithm works i mean mm-hmm. they detect the posts and that's how every social media works they detect the posts you like and then they show similar posts on your feed and explore page to keep you interested because they just want to bring more you know they, they just want to keep your eyeballs on the screen and on their app because that's how their entire marketing program works so i actually i have a hack where i just dim my screen because that usually helps turn my brain off and get me off my phone. And um, in terms of social media, I I would say that it's a really great place to market my book and connect with new readers because on Instagram, there's a whole um, 
there's a whole like I guess new Instagram called Bookstagram where readers just share their book reviews and I've had I've had actually a lot of success marketing to Bookstagram because it's obviously filled with people who are genuinely passionate about reading that's where I can find my niche and people who are interested in the particular genre my book is written in however I would say it is really simple to get distracted on social media what with I don't know maybe hate because obviously the larger your Instagram is the more hate you will receive right and it's easy to get really put off and derailed by that um also again just the thing with um getting distracted by the content that appears on your page it isn't necessarily related to what you're trying to achieve in that particular matter so yeah my hack is honestly just dimming my screen turning t- t- turning off my phone whenever I feel that it's too far and I literally just need to put my phone down and focus on something that is more productive what about TikTok because I know my daughter uses it I've play with it a yeah. bit. Are you, are you using it? Like, are you, because I think that, that it's for, it's a, it's a young person's game for sure. I mean, that's, that's pretty yeah. common, but um, the, the, I think there's opportunity there too. If used, you know, um, in a way that will work for you, I think that that, I mean, you would know better than I at this point because it's probably something mm-hmm. you're using, but is, is that an, is yeah. that an avenue that you're going down as well? Yeah. So in terms of TikTok, it's actually all about just hitting the algorithm and getting lucky with that. Because, uh, for example, if you use the correct hashtags and you utilize all of the hashtags and whatever to your advantage, then you will get on the free you page, you will get more views, you will reach more people. And I've been trying to do that, but I haven't had much luck with the algorithm on TikTok. I've had a lot of luck with the algorithm on Instagram, but not TikTok. I'm not sure why, and I will keep trying because TikTok is a really great marketing place too there's a lot of potential readers on there and just people I can connect with. However, I would say also with TikTok, it is a pretty dangerous place to get distracted, mm-hmm. not in dangerous in terms of, you know, like actual danger, but dangerous because it can really get you and knock you off track kind of like and you- knock you off your focus and what you're doing. Yeah. Kind of mm-hmm. like YouTube too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are YouTube you, are you too, doing yeah. stuff on YouTube? Are you, do you have, do you have a channel and stuff that you're, you're promoting your stuff there? Or do you just kind of like, I guess you, tra- you have to be like anybody selective mm-hmm. about what you're yeah. where you're where you're spending your time and attention and yes. that goes with social networks as well right yeah i created a youtube channel about a couple months ago i don't really use it that much i don't have that many subscribers i posted one video i think it it did fairly well i mean it didn't blow up or anything but i i prefer to use instagram a channel such as instagram because it's just much easier for me to operate Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. We'll get right back to the conversation after these words from our sponsors. Stress, sleep, recovery, these are all things that shape how we perform. I know that especially as this week gets underway, my family is off for two weeks with spring break. There's a lot of activity going on and I need to make sure I can manage my stress, get the proper amount of sleep while having a bit more of a dynamic schedule and then be able to recover quickly to serve you, my listeners, my readers, my clients, my customers, but most of all, my family. And I have to say that the one thing that I've added to my routine and have been using for quite some time that's made a remarkable difference is New Calm. You know, stress, it's it's really unavoidable. And it's imperative to your health and happiness to be able to manage stress and not be managed by it. Same goes for time, right? Well, New Calm gives you the power to slow down and, and get some distance, which will allow you to respond better to the demands of everyday life. New Calm accomplishes this by interrupting acute stress at its source and by bringing you into the calming brainwave patterns that are associated with relaxation, 
greater awareness, intuition, and providing a calming sensation. Nucom is clinically proven in over 1 million sessions to improve your sleep, reduce your stress, and boost your recovery without drugs and side effects. The Nucom system uses cutting edge neuroscience and it consists of three non invasive and non pharmaceutical items, all of which are included in your monthly subscription that costs less than a daily cup of coffee. The whole process is easy to use and to work into your daily routine to achieve better sleep, reduction in stress, and boost in recovery. Do what I did. You know, own the day with Nucom and make 2021 the year you manage your stress better. We have a special link set up specifically for listeners of the Productivity is Podcast. All you need to do is go to timecraftingnewcom.com and get 50% off your 30-day subscription of Newcom and their money-back guarantee. So again, that's timecraftingnucalm.com, timecraftingnucalm.com. Go there, get that 50% discount off a 30-day subscription and get their money back guarantee. I have really fallen in love with what Newcom offers me and I know it can do the same for you. Check out what Newcom has to offer you today. I've really tried to level up my reading over the past several months and one of the places that I'm making a concerted effort to do that in is print media, is is not just blogs or anything like that. Books are a big part of it, but I also wanna read some quality writing. And in print and online, The New Yorker stands apart for its commitment to truth and accuracy, quality writing, which is what I'm looking for, and compelling reporting and storytelling. The New Yorker is considered by many to be one of the most influential publications in the world. I know that when I read something in The New Yorker, it stands out. It is something that I take seriously, and I will often cite New Yorker articles in my weekly newsletter. The New Yorker's weekly print issues and daily online articles cover a full range of topics. There's something for everyone. Politics, news, international affairs, climate change and the environment, popular culture, the arts, fiction, food, humor, and cartoons. The list goes on and on and on. There are some fantastic articles on productivity and time management that I have come across again and again in the New Yorker. And it's not just through their back catalog. They are continuing to deliver the goods week in and week out. But they go beyond the week because the New Yorker has become the daily digital destination for news and cultural coverage, publishing 10 to 15 exclusive site-only stories every day. And in addition to that, you can use their apps, read from their online archive dating all the way back to 1925. You can solve crossword puzzles and more. In both print and online digital issues, the New Yorker has content from the best writers in America today. And a 12-week subscription for just $6 includes home delivery delivery of the print edition each week and unlimited access to the New Yorker website. It's it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's a 50% discount for 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 you. So here's what I want you to do. For a limited time, you as a listener of the Productivity is podcast can get 12 weeks of the New Yorker for just $6. That's right. I'm circling back. It's just 6 bucks. That's a savings of 50%. Plus Listeners of the Productivity is Podcast will receive an exclusive tote bag for free. All you need to do is go to newyorker.com slash timecrafting and use the promo code timecrafting at checkout. That's N-E-W-Y-O-R-K-E-R dot com slash timecrafting, promo code timecrafting to get 12 weeks off the New Yorker for just $6 and a free tote bag. Again, NewYorker.com slash timecrafting, promo code timecrafting. Take advantage of this offer. Now, the New Yorker delivers the goods time and time again. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. Take advantage of this offer right now. We don't know what the future holds, but we can sure try to forge it. And that's one of the things that I really want to deliver during this challenge that I'm delivering, a free challenge that I'm delivering at the end of March. From March 26th to 28th, I'm inviting you to take part in a free challenge. It's going to be live. 
It's going to be uh, fantastic. It's going to be stunning. It's going to be everything that you look for in a challenge that's going to help you level up your time management. You're going to get more control over your calendar. You're going to have a greater understanding of what's on your to-do list and how to deal with it. Plus, you're going to have a better mindset going forward. You're going to be able to forge the future that you want. And I'm sharing this on the podcast because I know that there's someone like you out there that could use this challenge. If it's not you, maybe it's somebody that you know. And all I want you to do is take this URL down, take this link down and sign up for the challenge yourself or pass it on to someone you know or do both. All you have to do to enter this free challenge is go to productivityist.com slash forge your future. That's the word productivity with IST at the end of it. I mean, you're listening to the podcast. You know how it's spelled. Dot com slash forge your future. And you can be part of this free three-day challenge that takes place from March 26th to March 28th. I would love to see you there because I am going to deliver not just the goods, but the greats over that three-day period. So again, to join the Forge Your Future Challenge for free, head to productivityist.com slash forge your future right now. And now let's get back to the show. What does your day look like? I mean, because that's, that's, I mean, I've talked to plenty of adults, both those that have, you know, quote, day jobs, and then those that are entrepreneurs. But what does, mm-hmm. like, what does a typical day for Christina look like? A typical day for me, I would say um, I wake up pretty early because I have all my classes in the morning with virtual school. We don't have uh, personal school right now because of COVID. So I get my all my classes done in the morning and try to not do any book marketing or go on social media in the early hours of the day because I just want to focus on my education and school. So after in the afternoon, I usually try to get some writing done. And I end up going on social media probably to, you know, post something and connect with new readers and new people. And I ended up getting distracted, which is, I think it happens to everyone. So I've been, I've really been trying to work on that bad habit of getting distracted by social media because it does suck a lot of productive time away from my day. And I think that can pertain to many other people. Uh So, yeah. So in the morning, I just get done with classes. Then in the afternoon, I usually I usually read because I'm also a really avid reader and I get some writing done, some marketing done, and then social media, obviously, because yeah. Are you more of a morning person or are you more of a night owl? I mean, I guess that's probably going to change. Yeah, I'm the same. And I think that'll change too. Like, I mean, it may not change drastically because I know I've always Yeah, it really fluctuates over the years. I used to be a huge morning person. I would just wake up super early and be very motivated and full of energy. But now it's kind of just, I, I would rather stay up late than wake up early. What about um, other apps that you use? Because, I mean, uh, again, there's a lot of people I talk to that are totally into apps. Do you use uh, app, like to-do list apps or anything like that to kind of keep yourself uh, on track with all the different things you're trying to do? Or mm-hmm. like how, wh- how do you keep track of the tasks and stuff that you need to do both in school and obviously for the writing that you're doing? So when it comes to aspects just to-do list or journaling, I actually prefer to use a real physical journal because that just, I guess it helps me express my emotions in a more real and a more connected way. Mm-hmm. I don't know, that that may sound a bit odd, but it's just, it's just what works for me. So I usually have a to-do list uh, for the day and then I have a list of short-term goals. Short-term is about, you know, like um, days and weeks and then long-term goals, months and years. So, in what I envision for myself in the future. How far do you go? Like how to, far? Do you, how many years? Just real quick. How, how many years do you go down? I mean, because your life's going to change a lot. Like, how far yeah. are you projecting in years? So far, my projections are around, I would say, ten years. Oh. But I'm hoping to expand a bit farther because, actually, well, I do. I do just like to live life by every day and what it presents to me. I'm not the kind of person who wants to know what will happen to me in the future because I just rather go with the flow. Mm -hmm. However, I do want to have some sort of a structure and a path carved in my life. Awesome. All right. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there, but it was just interesting to see you going. So, so you've got the, you've got the goals, short-term goals, long-term goals, and then. Yeah. I also sometimes bullet journal either about books I read just to express my thoughts and, um, you know, feelings about the book because I do garner a lot of inspiration for writing from reading. I also bullet journal ideas for short stories or new novels or something of the sort because it helps me um, harness my creativity and my imagination and keep and I try to do this every single day because I don't want to stem my creativity and I keep I want to keep stimulating it as much as I possibly can Mm -hmm. have you uh, so do you follow like Ryder Carroll's been on the podcast we'll link to that episode in the show notes he's the creator of the bullet journal method do you follow that method as closely to 
as it was initially kind of crafted. And I know Ryder said uh, the fact that bullet journaling can evolve with the user, I think is important too. Like how, how, how does your bullet journal, how closely uh, does your bullet journaling resemble what, you know, what it was basically, you know, put out as when, when Ryder put the book out there? That's a really interesting question. I would say it doesn't at all resemble it because (laughs) I just have my completely, um, just different way of expressing my thoughts while bullet journaling. And I actually, I used to try to achieve that similarity to what it originally was, but then it just wasn't for me. So I just went off track and did my own thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's shift gears for a minute and talk about the weekends because that's mm-hmm. when you don't have school. Right. So, yeah. um, but I mean, obviously you've got family, right? Like how many, mm-hmm. do you have brothers, sisters, uh, one older sister. Okay. Um, how do you navigate the weekends? Do you spend, I mean, cause that, that can be a slippery slope too, obviously if you're writing, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I know a lot yeah. of people, especially entrepreneurs, they, they, they subscribe to the idea of the hustle, right? Like where they're working mm-hmm. and they take very few breaks. You, you, I mean, how do you, yeah. do you use the weekends for downtime? Do you find like, how does that look? So, uh, weekends for me typically look like, as you said, a downtime and a time to reconnect with myself and, you know, just find more motivation and inspiration for the upcoming week. Because on the weeks, I do work almost every single hour of the day from around 7 a.m. to, I don't know, 8 p.m. because I am pretty busy in terms of that. However, on the weekends, I do try to direct my focus to taking some time for myself and also spending time with friends and family because I rarely get to do that on the weekdays. Right. Not just because of you being busy, but, but, but I mean, the, the thing yeah, about family yeah, is they're busy yeah. too, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's go back to meditation for a second then. So mm-hmm. uh, you've, the, how long have you been meditating now for? I would say about a year, maybe I started about last June, I think. So yeah, a little over a year. And mm-hmm. you feel that like, uh, that's something I've been really doing as we're recording this. It's a, a It's been something I've gone and done on again, off again. Did you find Mm -hmm. that it was like that for you where it was hard to keep the practice going? And then, and how did you, how did you make it stick? Mm -hmm. So some days I just would not at all want to meditate. There was just something within me that said, yeah, no, I'm not, I I really don't want, don't want to do this today. And it was, it was very difficult to keep on track and, uh, you know, keep up that sustainability and consistency in the beginning because I was not used to meditating and I would get distracted by the most trivial of things. I would have a hard time, you know, falling into that meditative and kind of hypnosis state. I would just be irritated by absolutely everything. But however, I think I think uh, practice makes perfect really pertains to this particular situation. And well, almost any situations, but this one in particular, because if you if you really just force yourself to do it every day, and to just completely relax and unwind when you're doing it, you'll find that it comes a lot easier than it would if you're just being choppy with it and and inconsistent. What do you, what are your favorite genres of writing that you like to follow? We'll get into authors and stuff in a little bit, but I mean, I think Mm -hmm. genres are really interesting, both, you know, in terms of fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So in terms of nonfiction, I'm really interested in writing about science because I, uh, science is my favorite subject in school along, along with English, obviously. And I do love discovering more about, our solar system, our planet Earth, the ecosystems and everything. So if I were to write a nonfiction book, then it'd most likely be something about science and the science of our planet Earth. So in terms of fiction, um, horror and thriller, I tried to write fantasy a couple months ago. It really did not work out for me because it's just an entirely disparate genre from what I from what I'm comfortable with writing. Do you think uh, you mentioned science, of course, like is is your path? I mean, you, and you've talked about long-term career goals. Is your path to become an author or is it going to be like, is writing going to be something that is a side thing for you? Like what is, what, I mean, I knew when I was younger that I wanted to do either writing or acting or something like that. And mm-hmm. I didn't get that. You've probably seen that diagram that shows, you know, that what people think their life is going to look like or their career is going to look like, and then what it actually looks like and it's squiggly yeah. lines. The, the journey to where I am now is very different than the journey I envisioned, but I get to, yeah, I get course. to do things like talk to you and, and do performing in that way, do, do speaking, I get to write, but it's not the, the thing I envisioned. What, mm-hmm. what, what kind of path do you feel that you're carving out for yourself so that when you're looking down the road, like, this is what, this is what I wanted to do and look, here I am. So I do feel like writing is something that will always stick with me for the rest of my life. And I will keep writing books. I want to write at least four more books over the course of my lifetime, if not, if not more, but that's kind of just the minimum. 
um, the, the bar that I set for myself because, again, I'm really invested in writing and sharing my work with others. However, I don't think that I will actually choose being an author as a long-term and full career because, as you may know, it is incredibly difficult to make a sustainable living as an author mm-hmm. because that industry is always fluctuating. One day you may be this, you may be um, just, you may, you may be like Stephen King the next day, nobody knows who you are. And I can say that from experience. I mean, honestly, I was my actually, I, I'm not really a famous author. However, I would say that my, I guess my rise to successful authorship was really, really sporadic because I struggled a lot with marketing and selling my book back in the months of like May and June. Then all it took about was just one week for me to develop a new marketing plan. And then boom, I, I, you know, I'd sold over a thousand copies. So I would say then, then again, anything can happen that will make me sink to where I was before. So I'm not going to choose being an author as a long-term career because that's not, that's not something I think I can sustain. However, I, I think I really, I think I'll definitely choose a career in the field of science because I'm really interested in that. And I can see myself doing it for, you know, a couple of decades or so. Who are the people that you look to and uh, you admire? Like who, if you're looking at, and it could be in any field really, but, uh, mm-hmm. and, and incidentally for the, I mean, this is a question that I think anybody can, can answer, uh, adult or, 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 uh, or child, because I mean, we all look at people and we say, oh, you know, I admire that person. Who are some of the people mm-hmm. that you look to and you admire, uh, you know, based on the achievements they've had, based on the lifestyle that they lead, that kind of thing? So in terms of authors, I would say Stephen King. And um, is there right if I mentioned people who've already passed? Oh, abso- right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, in terms of authors, I would say Edgar Allan Poe, Stephen King and Arthur Conan Doyle. I guess those are my top three. That makes sense based then, on based on the yeah. type of writing you like to do. That absolutely makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then otherwise, I would say I really looked up. I really look up to Greta Thunberg, who is an environmental activist. She's only a couple years older than me, and I can see she's very passionate about what she does. And I want to someday cultivate that kind of and replicate that kind of passion towards. Um, you know, towards the things that I hope to attain in life, because she's an incredibly successful person. And I do really admire her and everything she's done, because she has made a very profound impact on um, not only just the world, but also our generation. Well, Christina, you're well on your way. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed with, with, thank you, with what you, with how you carry yourself and not just, not just the things you've done, but how you carry yourself. There's, it, it shows that you're very thoughtful and very mindful, and there's a there's a there's a perspective there that I think is 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 I wouldn't say unique, but definitely uh, heightened based on you know Thank your you. age. So, uh, mm-hmm. one more thing before I let you go, and I tend to ask this to pretty much every guest: if uh, what's one action that someone can take to start being more productive and making the most use of their time and attention? What's one thing that you would share with my, my audience here to let them know? Hey, this is something that you can do to start paying more attention, being more intentional and being more productive? That's an interesting question. I would say just find your true passion because all of us spend our whole life doing something that we end up not liking and that's what makes it hard to stay productive and attentive. So I would say it really, it's perfectly okay to take months, if not even years to experiment with all sorts of different things and figure out what you really want in life. Because in life it's, um, it's really just about doing what you love and finding a passion for that because that's what's going to keep you motivated and inspired every single day. Keep that mindset because it gets harder and harder mm-hmm. as you get older, as I'm yeah. sure you're, you've seen. Yeah. Christina, where can people keep up with you and your work? So you can actually find me on my website. You can get in touch with me. Find all my social medias on my website, which is christina.co, just um, my name and then .co. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much, Christina, for joining me today on the Productivity Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I'd like to thank Christina for joining me on the podcast. She was a real treat to have a conversation with, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for her. Again, uh, I hope you got a lot out of this conversation. I know I did. And there are plenty of conversations that I've had in the past and plenty more to come. And the way that you can access those readily, easily, and quickly 
is by subscribing to the podcast in the app that you are listening to the podcast to right now. That could be Spotify. That could be Apple Podcasts. It could be Overcast. It could be Pocket Cast. It could be wherever, but you don't want to miss a single episode of what we're going to be delivering here on the Productivity is Podcast. Not only that, but if you're subscribed, you can find the archives that much faster. You can search through them. You can get more out of the podcast. So subscribe today. All you need to do is hit that subscribe button. And then if you're so inclined, you could leave me a rating and review, but I want you to get to know the podcast first, of course. So again, subscribe to the podcast today. That way you don't miss a single episode because I've got a lot of great stuff coming down the pipeline over the next several months. We're already mapped out and I can't wait to deliver them to you. So I don't want you to miss a single episode. Subscribe to the podcast today. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen. Until next time, this is Mike Vardy, the host of the Productivity is Podcast, reminding you to stop guessing and start going. See you later.